Hello, it's Saturday, May 4th. Welcome to West Virginia. We're in Charleston at the Capitol here behind me. And this is kind of a cool little town. It's built right into the hills. As you're driving in, there's some uh, cool looking houses right on the edges of cliffs. So uh, it's kind of a neat place. Beautiful day. Some sort of party going on here. Part of the University of Charleston across the road, actually across the river, set into the hills. Like looks like it's probably graduation going on. Maybe wedding photos going on here too. Right across the street from the Capitol is the zero milestone marker. All the mile markers and all the highways in the state are measured from this spot, going out from here. Seems kind of an odd way to do it, but that's the way it's done here. And from the other side. Okay, just went up a really hilly, windy road to get here. And then we crossed the New River Gorge Bridge. I'm gonna go in the visitor center here. going down to the bottom for a closer look. 178 steps. Well, those 178 steps uh, didn't even touch the distance down to the bottom of the gorge. Okay, we're taking the one lane road that uh, winds all over the place down to the bottom of the gorge to get some pictures looking up. This looks really high, but you don't realize how high it really is until you realize that it's a four lane wide highway on top. And I'm kind of waiting for a semi to go by on top so that you can see. All right, you can see something going across the top. Pretty hard to see. Oh yeah, good. One more shot from the very bottom of the gorge, right on the river, and almost right underneath the bridge. Okay, on the way up and out, 
Just getting a shot of how narrow this roadway is. All right, going across the top of the bridge. Although you can, can't really tell just looking straight ahead how far down it is. I can't do this and drive at the same time. Okay, we made it to the grist mill in Babcock State Park. Okay, it's about uh, 3.15 in the afternoon. We're starting off on a 20 mile bike ride. So hopefully this doesn't take too long into the afternoon and uh, the, the rain stays away, but I think we'll be all right. We are in the middle of nowhere. I mean, this is in uh, Clover Lick, West Virginia. And it took a long time to get here over hilly, windy, crazy roads. Um, some of it, uh, at one point, a deep, a steep 9% downhill grade uh, with a bunch of S curves and banked corners. Uh, it was like a roller coaster. And then the last seven miles to get to this tiny little place was uh, really just a one lane blacktop with uh, two lanes of traffic or two way traffic, although we only met one or two cars. So uh, it, this, is, uh, this is really out in the middle of nowhere. It's kind of crazy. Okay, just getting started here. We're at mile marker 71. I think we're actually working backwards. I'm not sure. The trail is crushed gravel and it flows right along the uh, Greenbrier River following an old railway. Okay, I got off just to walk a couple steps down to the riverbank, just to show that uh, the river is actually flowing pretty fast. And I did consciously make the decision to go downstream first, kind of assuming that uh, it wouldn't be too much hill, uphill on the way back. But I don't know, as fast as the river's flowing and as, as fast as we seem to be going downhill, uh, it's going to be hard coming back. We're opting to walk through. And I'm going to get in here a ways till it's really dark. I'm going to shut my headlight off on my bike and see what difference it makes. That doesn't make much difference at all except right, right there. I 
And this is what my headlight looks like over my handlebars. I don't think this thing likes to focus in the dark. Probably not. And I just wanted to see what our bikes look like. Phil and Amy got me these cool, uh, or both of us, these cool tail lights that put kind of a little red bike lane down on the ground behind you. And I do have a headlight on my bike, but nothing on Melanie's. But I can't seem to zoom in on you because it doesn't want to focus. We probably could have ridden through, but I think the proper thing is to walk your bikes through tunnels. Wait for the camera to adjust to the light. There we go, that's better. Okay, I miscalculated a little bit. I thought it was about 10 miles to the tunnel, but it's only about six and a half. So we might ride a little farther. We cross this bridge first. It is right after the tunnel. And then we'll turn around and come back. couple hundred yards past mile marker 64 so we've only gone seven miles in but because it's all uphill on the way back I think we'll turn around and we should get about 15 miles in so there's the direction we were going and we're not right next to the river anymore so everything looks just like this so it's probably a good time to turn around Are those lights straight back there? Yeah, no, but it's okay. All right, since there's nobody police us, we're gonna ride through the cave, I mean the tunnel, slowly. Whoa, what? nothing, I can't really see where I'm going. Curving all over the place, whoa. Probably should've let our eyes adjust first. You can't see anything. No, you don't. <laughs> All right, we're doing this with uh, one headlight, and Melanie's just following my tail lights, which you do give her the little lane on the ground. Ah, that wasn't bad. All right, it's about 6.15 and we're done. That was a fun little 15 miles or so. Um, it was fun on the way down anyway. <laughs> As you can probably see behind Melanie, it's raining. So it rained quite a bit on the way back. and uh, But uh, three times we had deer across the trail in front of us, so that was kind of cool. And then it was uphill on gravel uh, into the wind. So uh, the last few miles were kind of hard, but uh, it was good. And we have no internet to get us out of here. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, once again, we're back to uh, Cloverlick in the middle of nowhere and have uh, actually a pretty long ride into Virginia to uh, stay near Shenandoah National Park. So I don't know how we're going to get out of here. But I can take my uh, sweaty skull cap off, I guess. <laughs> Here we are, Shenandoah National Park, May 10th, it's Monday. We came in at Thornton Gap entrance, but we drove up to the north entrance almost, and we went to the visitor center there. So now we finally have a map, 
we can actually know what we're doing. Last night we uh, drove on some windy roads that were hard to find on the state map, but it's a good thing we had a state map of West Virginia. I am really impressed with this stone fence that they put here. It looks very naturalistic, but very nice instead of just seeing guardrails. And here's the view from one of the overlooks. Okay, we stopped at the Mount Marshall Overlook uh, just to get another view on our way to our hikes. It's actually chilly and windy up here, but the sun's out much better than our drive yesterday when we were on one lane roads in the middle of nowhere and actually crossed the line between West Virginia and Virginia with no marker on the roadside as to where you are or that you're passing from one state to another. Just totally backwoods. But again, here's uh, another overlook. We'll take a panoramic shot of this or a sweeping shot. Just checking the compass, see which direction we're facing. All right, now we're at Hog's Back Overlook on the other side of the ridge. A mile or two from our last stop. We're at an elevation of about 3,385 feet. Stopping in another overlook. Just because you could see some towns, buildings, something down there, farms. Okay, we are off on the first hike of the day. This one to Dark Hollow Falls. About a mile and a half down, 444 feet, then back up. We're getting started at about uh, 1.45 in the afternoon. It's chilly, but uh, re really not bad at all for hiking. And I just kind of wanted to note all the trees that appear dead. These are all the hemlock trees. Uh, there used to be millions of them in the park. 95% of them are dying due to some sort of pest, insect. Like I said, it's a little cool. I'm wearing the hooded sweatshirt on top. But I got the summer shorts on the bottom. There's a little bit of this. It'll be kind of hard going back up. All right, looks like we made it. Kind of a series of cascades here. In fact, it does just keep going farther downhill.
Well, that wasn't too bad, but uh, we have to go all the way up yet. Okay, starting up at about 2.35. All right, I got 3.15, so I can't remember when we started, so I'm not sure how long that took. But uh, we got it done. Moving on to the next one. Okay, hike number two up to Stony Man. A little over a mile and a half, uh, an hour walking time, 340 feet elevation gain. It's about 10 minutes to four. We follow the blazes on the trees. The blue blaze means you're in the Shenandoah National Park Trail, and the white blaze means that you're on part of the Appalachian Trail. Okay, so far, just uh, a lot of the same uphill. Actually, we got a tiny bit of a level spot here. But here, it starts uphill again. This is actually the turnoff for the AT. It goes off that way, and we go uphill. Okay, all of a sudden, much rockier. Okay, really no stair steps and actually fewer rocks on this hike. Although there's some right here. A little busy up here. Not really that close to the edge, but uh, it is quite a drop off. We're at an elevation of 4,011 feet, second highest point in the park, about uh, 40 feet lower than the highest point. Skyline Drive. Straight off the cliff is northwest. Okay, starting the descent at 442. Had to put the sweatshirt on because it's kind of cold and windy up here on top of the rocks, but I'll probably take that off pretty quick. I'll get some of the weird shaped trees in the way down. It's weird how they grow out in an angle and then up. I was really hoping to see a bear somewhere on one of these hikes, but evidently not. Although the park's supposed to be loaded with them. 
Hey, stopped to check out this post. This is at the crossroads of the AT and our trail. And this is uh, the trail we're on coming down. And this is the other side. All right, we're almost back to the beginning because I remember this tree. Here's a weird one where the tree is growing right up between these rocks. In fact, I think it's probably lifted the rock up on that's on top of it. I guess I'm not sure. All right, we got done about 520. All right. Just one quick stop on the way back at Bacon Hollow Overlook. Just some more scenery. It looks a lot greener down here. Everything looks greener, all the hillsides and everything. Not like farther up the road where everything looks gray and brown. <laughs> this is the fifth time we've seen deer on our drive back. One more time. Another quick stop. This one at Turk Mountain Overlook. Mainly just to show that the sun's going down and it's getting light. All right, leaving the park. That was kind of a long drive to get to this point. And 10 times we saw deer either near or on the road. And the 10th time we actually had to hit the, hit the brakes pretty hard to uh, avoid hitting them. So it's about uh, eight o'clock. Okay, Tuesday morning, May 11. Uh, we're just uh, out to see some more things and uh, we're driving by here. Just stopping to take a couple pictures for the fun of it. Not even going in. Alright, we're at uh, Luray Caverns. It's supposed to be the biggest and best caverns in the east. And there's just a lot of stuff here. There's kind of an adventure park over there. And then just this immense parking lot. So evidently, it's a pretty popular place. Like I said, there's just a bunch of stuff to do back here. But all we're going to do is go in the caves. All right, this is a self-guided tour, and it just looks like an amusement park. Like, they just expect giant long lines here. I don't know. Well, the door before we even came in had a screen where people could wait like you would in a ride. having a hard time figuring out what to focus on. All right, I can't figure out how to get this thing to focus in here, so I'm gonna leave the autofocus on and hope we can see what we get. And it looks like we're gonna have a brick floor the whole way, so the walk-in will be easy. Right, I'm hoping this is focusing. This is actually a pool of water that's no more than a foot and a half deep. 
it's reflecting the stalactites from the top to look like stalagmites on the bottom. That is just really cool. Pluto's ghost in the lower right. It is pretty cool every time you turn a corner there's something else kind of cool to see. They are translucent. Maybe this is the thing. <laughs> if you can make this out, this is a giant stalactite that was on the flat side on the right, was connected to the ceiling and broke off. This is a massive ocean. Well, this is kind of living up to the hype. Every time I think I'm going to quit filming stuff, uh, there's just more things that look cool. And you're right next to them.
I know a lot of this is the same stuff from different angles, but it's cool. It goes way back there. The lag pipe organ, the largest musical instrument in the world. It's in the Guinness World of Records. It was invented by a guy who was a math mathematician and electrical engineer in Springfield, Virginia. It uses stalactites as its source. It has rubber-tipped mallets that are electrical sing signaled to gently tap the stalactites, producing the musical tones. Getting a little more on our way out. Here are the fried eggs. Stick your hand over them to get some size perspective. And they are just about real egg size. I really love the organ. That was my favorite part. Anything else? There were a lot of formations of various colors. We saw the fish market, that was new. And I just want to say that overall I was impressed. Uh, there were cool looking formations throughout the entire thing. Hardly a dull spot in the whole thing. I couldn't get it all on film. I had to shut the camera off after a while. So. Uh, if you're looking for a ornate cave, uh, I'd recommend coming here. Okay, after the cave, we'll do a run through the classic car museum. Horse tricycle. Yeah. Packed an awful lot of vehicles in here. This thing cost $5,100 in 1914. That was a fortune. But it would have looked cool. This is crazy. 1932. This thing cost $15,800. You can still buy new cars for that. The 1928 Mercedes Benz was $15,000. This is from 1931. We're just looking at how long this car looks and just how big it looks. And all the streets at the time, the lanes in the streets were barely big enough to fit those cars through. The seats inside this one are genuine pigskin. Okay, one more shot of Stony Man.
people standing at the very top where we were the other day. to get those bikers because I'm amazed at how many people were biking. This has got to be the most unfriendly biking road besides being all hills at kind of a high elevation so it'd be super strenuous. There is no bike lane obviously and traffic coming around corners like this all the time. I'm surprised nobody gets killed on bikes. I mean if there's somebody right here we'd run right over them, especially if there was somebody in the other lane coming at us. One more stop at Signal Knob Overlook. As we're already kind of on our way out. I think that is the South Fork of the Shenandoah River. Our next stop here is Richmond, Virginia, at the Capitol building. Lots of construction everywhere. You can see the cranes behind it, so they're working on buildings back there. They're working on the streets right in front here. And uh, kind of up and down both sides of it. We were on the street over here. I'll get this shot of the statue with the uh, building and the crane in the back because somebody else is taking up the font, the prime photographic spot. Must be graduation. Found Edgar Allan Poe. He's buried in the trees behind all the construction fences and trailers. We kind of had to slip in here. <laughs> okay, Wednesday morning, May 12th. We're in Richmond, Virginia. And so evidently, the other day, there was a major cyber attack on a uh, fuel pipeline that that supplies uh, everything on the East Coast or the Southeast. So we're now in a state of emergency in Virginia regarding gas. At this point, there are 10% uh, of the uh, gas stations in Richmond are out of gas totally. And evidently there are giant long lines to get gas everywhere. Uh, we don't really know um, how much gas we've got in the car, probably half a tank, we're gonna check here in a second. And uh, we're just gonna go out right now and look for gas and then uh, decide what we're doing the rest of the trip. Okay, we definitely need to get gas. We're not going to be able to do anything until we do. Okay, so the first place we stopped, or went by, was uh, totally out of gas. I think you're, you might be one of the last ones, but go ahead. And then uh, this place was kind of a mad madhouse getting in here. Uh, they were directing traffic around the building to the back and then all in one direction. and. Uh, one of the pumps right next to me is evidently totally out of gas, dry. And uh, this guy behind me just said that uh, we might be one of the last people getting gas because they're running out. So I hope we get our tank full. Price is up uh, a little bit from the other day. We pulled into town last night uh, thinking there's no problem at all. And then on the uh, 11 o'clock news last night, uh, we heard about the shortage and that there were places all over the place running out of gas and it was just like it like came out of nowhere. And evidently there are a few places that uh, were charging $6.99 a gallon, uh, which is illegal to price gouge. So uh, they were kind of getting in trouble being on the news. So it's, it's been a wild night this morning. All right, we're full. We got uh, 451 miles to empty. Okay, starting our second bike ride of the trip. 
And we're starting in Jamestown, Virginia, and heading up the Richmond Capitol Trail in the direction of Richmond, but that's uh, 60, 70 miles away. We're gonna go up maybe 10 or so and come back. And uh, we'll see how this goes. This is a paved trail all the way, so it should be fairly easy. And again, that's long from between Richmond and Jamestown. But uh, we're only going up probably just past this water here because uh, it's level all the way except for right where that bridge is. It's a big hill up that bridge and over the water. About a tenth of a mile in and we're unsure already. We were right here, <laughs> but we're sure, pretty sure that the uh, trail crosses the road and goes this way. So south of here, like all over the south, they're having rain. But it's just cloudy here, not supposed to be any rain. However, everywhere around here, it's uh, 10 to 15 degrees below normal for this time of year. And right now, it's freezing. It is really kind of cold. Well, this goes on a little ways. Oh, I read there was a detour because they're working on the bridge up here farther. So, yeah, we go right. Might add a little mileage. We were thinking this is normally a hiking trail and no bikes are allowed. All right, that was easy. All right, this is hilariously confusing, but we're definitely going the wrong direction. I think we have to go back through all that stuff we just did. <laughs> but I don't know where we come out. This is weird. I think we might put in an extra five miles just trying to figure out where we are, how to get started. We're really not even on the trail that follows the highway up towards Richmond. We're still just sort of messing around out here at the beginning. So I don't know what to do. Yeah. I had to be on the road. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we had to go several hundred yards. In fact, to see a curve up there, we had to go about twice that far on the road. But it was it was kind of hairy. The traffic's right next to you, going both directions, and you know some of it like this. Quiet now. So I didn't like it either. But we finally found the trail. That took about 20 minutes at least to figure it out. So let's go. We got uh, 3.9 uh, 3 miles and <laughs> we, we just hit the trail, so we were lost. Finally a mile marker. We'll focus on that. I got exactly six. So we added two extra. All right, the trail parallels this highway for the, the whole trip. Whatever it is, 60, 70 miles. Sometimes in the woods, but lots of time right along the road. Yeah, on one side of the road or the other. Okay, here's one of the road crossings. So, dense woods on the right now.
All right, we're really not that far in. Eight and a half by my speedometer, odometer. And we gotta climb this hill to get over the bridge. Gear down a little. And Melanie couldn't decide whether to go up this, but decided to. It's not bad. Okay, top of the bridge, looking east behind me, and I'll try to do this uh, between traffic going by because the road is right here and it gets a little loud, but we'll pan around a little. Melanie taking pictures. I don't know how well you can see to the west. All right, I'm going down to the other end, just to say I crossed it and back. I couldn't even hit 30 miles an hour. Uh, this says Jamestown Settlement is 7.4 miles. I've done, if it'll focus, 9.3. Okay, this is where we rode on the road and jumped onto the trail. So we're going to make this corner and uh, see where their detour signs take us. Well, I think it's supposed to go that way. Let's see what the bridge goes over. I guess that's kind of needed. Alright, we're going across this bridge, but... I think the detour sign we took in the first place is on the other side of this bridge. So I don't know what the whole detour thing is all about. Now look, this is where we got off before. So this doesn't make any sense at all. There, we didn't need to take a detour at all. Okay, so the whole detour thing didn't make any sense. <laughs> right? Not at all. There's something in the woods. I don't know if you can see the mile marker. One mile to go. Hey, pull it back into the station. And no rain. And no rain. All right, I got 507. And let's see. I got 16.7 miles. 15.4. And Melanie's got 15.4. But I crossed the bridge, went a little farther where she stopped on top. Stopping again at the bridge. There's some bikers up there right now. This crosses the Chickahominy or Chickahominy River. Okay, we only use about a quarter tank of gas, but we kept passing places that are just totally out. Found a place that has some gas. So we're buying uh, the expensive stuff now, $3.89 a gallon, but we're filling up. Okay, Thursday, May 13th, uh, still in uh, Glen Allen, which is a northern suburb of Richmond. And uh, lead story on the news, of course, is the uh, cyber attack on the uh, oil pipeline or the gas pipeline 
And at this point, uh, here in Virginia, seven out of 10 gas stations are out of gas. But we gassed up last night, got pretty close to a full tank. So uh, we're kind of cutting our trip short. Uh, we were gonna go into Annapolis, Maryland to see uh, the Maryland Capitol and then on to Dover, Delaware to see the Dover Capitol uh, to help complete Melanie's scrapbooking project of getting a picture of every state capital. So we're gonna have to come back this direction uh, some other year. But we're gonna head into uh, West Virginia where we kind of plan to stay tonight and uh, maybe see something else if we can on along the way if it's not uh, too many miles off the beaten track and uh, heading towards home. All right, traveling back through West Virginia. We're about 25 miles south of Morgantown. And we're at uh, Blackwater Falls State Park. Walking down a kind of steep trail, but it's really not very far. You can hear the falls from here, so you have no idea what it's going to look like. Looks like less of a gas shortage here in West Virginia, but um, I don't think we're out of the woods yet. A lot of steps. Pretty cool. It's hard to judge the size until you look at the people over here. Kind of a popular spot. To make out Melanie's green hat. Fifty-seven feet from that rock in the middle of the falls down to the bottom. I want to jump off that rock. Okay, we move to the other side of the gorge for the uh, upper view. Stopping to gas up again, even though we only needed six gallons to fill up, but uh, not taking any chances. We have heard that uh, West Virginia gets their gas through a different pipeline. So, uh, so far things in West Virginia have been pretty good as far as buying gas. So that sounds correct. So now we're on our way to Morgantown to stay for the night and then drive all the way home tomorrow uh, through Ohio where we heard their price gouging for gas. It also sounds like we're uh, missing the storms that are coming. So uh, weather-wise, uh, for us, we've actually done pretty well this trip. All right, we're not really lost, but uh, we're trying to follow the map, trying to get to Morgantown. We actually have to cross through a tiny piece of Maryland to get there. And Melanie went back to uh, take a picture of a sign, because we're actually, I, th I think probably at the top of a hill here to my right is the official highest point in Maryland. So you get a picture of the sign? <laughs> and up into this high point. Yeah. So we not only taking credit for Maryland, but we've seen the highest elevation in Maryland. Yeah, evidently. Although we never actually saw a sign on the road, though, that said we're going into Maryland. So maybe the border of Maryland is Goes up the, the up the hill, and we're not actually in it. Well, we will be in a couple minutes. So anyway. we're uh, we're figuring it out as we go along. Okay, it is official, we're entering Maryland. Stop at another roadside attraction. It's been kind of a fun day, we're just sort of making it up as we go along. 
Okay, Friday morning, May 14th. You can see my breath. It's about 40 degrees out here in Morgantown, West Virginia. We're uh, on our way home, about 750 miles, so we're going to be driving all day. So we're going to get a uh, very uh, non-nutritious breakfast at Tim Hortons and be on our way.